All right. Happy Monday, everybody. And here we are for some Minecraft musing. So, oh, sorry. I'm just still very uh, intrigued by Grok. And so I've been talking to Grok, the AI tool on uh, XApp, formerly Twitter. I'm just going to keep calling it XApp. I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of the hype about being outraged by the name is more just directed at the fact that Elon doesn't as align with a lot of political views and ideals on one side, quote unquote. But honestly, like, if he just bought a media company that relies on usage and traffic, I feel like I would be a fire starter if I was going more towards the rules of business and tactics and marketing and stuff like that versus, you know, I don't think Elon really believes a lot of what he says. I mean, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't see inside Elon's head, but I seem to remember a time when he served to some capacity or, or another on a board for, or for the government or something for like the environment. I don't, I don't or so, I don't know. I'm sure I could Google it, I could grok it, but either way, my point is AI is getting scary, but also very useful. So, I mean, regardless of what you feel about Elon, it's a very useful tool already in just like a few minutes of talking with it. I, I still try to be careful not to give too much information, no identifying information about myself. Um, I did mention, you know, the university where... Yeah, so there's some stuff. There's also stuff that you can scrape off the internet. Like, there's class lists, there's criminal records, there's, um... I think there's even, like, rental records to a point. Like, if you've been evicted from a place, I think that might be public record. I don't know. If it's a formal eviction, uh, maybe that has to be the case. If you were just... I don't know, because either way, to make sense, it would have to be something that would touch... Like, the courts publicize everything, government, um, news places, if you were worth paying attention to, I don't know, like, I mean, so, but yeah, if you ever Google yourself, it's amazing, like, I, I feel like every time you put your name on an application, it tracks that, so, oh, anyways, back to the nonsense, we're building onto this, and I'm going to start using some grok to try to... Now, we're going to organize all of our thoughts. Now, we started to do something like that, and I talked about it, but we're actually going to write things down. I did get a bunch of resources off screen or off camera to uh, think. I mean, I did just get a bunch of resources. I was mining for a lot of that. I mean, that's going to take so much stone. And I did make the interior slabs, and the exterior is a solid block. So it's got, like, in fact, you can kind of see it from here, how it, like, looks a little thicker there, like, right above where the reticle is now. It's, like, taller, so there's, like, a, a border, basically. And I might even scale that back. It looks a little silly with, like, how wide it is. Like, maybe two units would have been fine. I don't know. Anyways, not the point. <laughs> the only point about any of this is to kind of philosophize how to fix, how to solve problems and how to fix things in the world, but not in any vain way thinking that I'm the only one that can do it. I'm definitely not the only one trying to do it. I see it all the time when I see people trying to teach computer science. In fact, there's memes that I've seen about, you know, every, computer scientists like, here's my YouTube channel. Or what was that meme? It was comparing uh, graduates, I think, and like law graduates were all protective of their, their data, their privacy, and they were like suing people. And then uh, CS graduates or computer science graduates are like, welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> and it's like, Hey, you want to learn computer science? I will teach you, and it's going to be fun. So, And a lot of that is because of the aha moments. Like when you see somebody understand a complex concept like writing computer code, and they see it run. Like I mean, you can explain it all day. You can tell it, but when you actually see it in action, and it, see it calculate or compute something that you previously didn't think was even possible, and that's kind of what my little uh, aha amazement moment of... Um, Grok was just now. So to break it down, there's already a couple of organizations that Grok suggested, and at least it's a jumping off point for me to start my own research. Oh yeah, look at that. I built a ton of books and stuff so we could write. We still have those. I went and got a bunch of ink. Anyway, so we, we have some supplies. So I was kind of looking for earlier, and I'm all, now I'm just looking for a place to dump all this. Well, not this, or this. Eh, I guess this and this. I did find some glow squids, and I kind of feel bad but kind of not they kept appearing a lot in this underwater underground cave that i was in so yes i did get some glow ink um let's go ahead and put all this stuff there actually 
flocks of lapis lazuli. So yeah, so there's already two, um, there's the World Computer Exchange, I wrote them down in the other room on a computer, but, um, there's already two, and I think I can access my results, in fact, let me look at that real quick. So if we pull up XAP, we go into Grok, no, oh wait, no, it doesn't save. No, you can download the stuff, but either way, I could just ask it again. Be like, hey, blah, blah, blah. And it's very instant replies, very th well thought out, like... There's a lot of people training Grok. And, now, and I think there's even a rush for people to make sure that I AIs are trained the way that they lean, like politically or re religiously or culturally, like all any kind of... I mean, mainly it's political. It's like red versus blue is like the main divide. But even within that, there's a lot of people that are more like, oh, come on. <laughs> there's like people that are um, libertarian and they're in the middle or they side more of this or that. And and I hate that, you know, just because like, because, yeah, I traditionally vote Democrat. That's Democrat. That's my thing. Only because from an early age, I was trying to think outside the box and I, I was just worried about other people. Not saying, again, that I'm a saint or anything like that. It was just like I was constantly worried about other people and how that would go off. Like, I think, and I, I don't know, trying to psychoanalyze my own self, but I think a lot of that stems from an early age of making some pretty bad mistakes and remembering those mistakes and be like, oh, like I know this one time I was very cringy. I was in like first grade and I was trying to flirt with this girl. I thought she was cute. So I put my arms on, well, she was like standing against a wall, just waiting in line for something. And I put my arms on either side of her head and leaned against the wall and like looked her in the eyes. And I was about to say something, but then I, I stopped. And I was like, oh, crud, what do I say? And, then like, <laughs> and she just kind of like ducked out under my arms and like moved away. And, and that was it. She didn't say anything. It was, I mean, I'm sure she was thinking like, what is this kid doing? And I'm glad like it didn't go because I mean, a lot of that is projection and how we think more of like what things really are. I mean, things are more significant and relevant in our own minds when we mess up, and I've seen it, you know, a, a million times, think of, like, Chris Farley, like, I've seen it a hundred times, anyways, um, but it is, I mean, that, that's probably not a core memory for her, that she probably doesn't even know, or remember, or, like, and even if she did, she probably just thought, oh, that kid was weird, like, he was just, I don't know, or maybe she thought I was going for a kiss, I don't know, that's a little creepy and rapey, like, forceful and not cool. And, you know, of course, kids will be kids. Like, they might do stuff like that. Although, not really. I feel like everybody, all well, kids that age are a little nervous to be doing any of that. Like, at least in public. Because my actual first kiss, that well, was about that time. Nope, second grade. It was second grade. Because I didn't live in that house until then. Yeah, and it was a kiss on the cheek. And, yeah, and I just recently found out I was the first kiss for someone else that was on a little bit later than first grade. Um, but yeah, and not to shame them or anything, like, there's no right or wrong answers, like, it's just life, I'm, that's my personal experience and my kind of, you know, what I got to go on, I mean, the first real milestone, that was, what, 14? Of course, I was a, a working kid, I was out and about, I had a job all through high school, I was, like, experiencing what it was like to work, also, how much time do we have? Oh, jeez, I just started a thing. Oh, and I don't have an edit thing. Huh. Oh, man. So, sorry, my laundry, I had laundry going. I wasn't sure how long I had on it. So there might be just like this time. Here we go. There's some peaceful music. We'll give you a, a view of the the temple and the cows. And we'll just, I'm going to go hang my laundry real quick. Hold on.
<sighs> oh, sweet. There's still music going on. Thank you. Sorry about all that. I, uh, you might have heard... I might have been too far away, but I was just cracking up thinking about the absurdity of just... Oh, yeah, here. I'm just going to go hang some clothes, do some laundry real quick. But I prefer to hang clothes instead of use a dryer. I haven't used a dryer. Uh, I've only used it a couple of times in, like, the last few months that I can remember. Um, but even as I say that, I was like, nope, there was that one time where I needed something dry quick. I did some laundry, and the kiddos needed their jammies that they wanted. and Yeah, so I did it. So, I will make exceptions to the rules, but... Alright, the llamas can just hang out here. And live with the cows. Anyways, so... Always trying to make a break for it. Or she. No, because I think they have horns? Are those ears? No, those are horns. So, which means... That would make them bulls. And bulls are males. Bulls have... I'm <laughs> just kidding. It's being really inappropriate here, which I'm going to be careful about not doing, because you know, I constantly worry that there's little kiddos watching these suits, because it is Minecraft, it is, you know, building stuff, cool stuff, and some of my shorts kind of tend to make it seem like this is more of a family-friendly channel, which mostly it is, but mostly I feel awkward if kids are watching this, because I'm really talking to, like, adults, or at least teenagers, but even as I say that, I treat my own kiddos like like adults, I mean, to a point, like, I, get, I show them the respect to explain things, I, I try not to just say no, because, I mean, that's one thing that, like, I, at least I knew growing up, and, like, from hearing what other people, their opinions and stuff, it just, like, that seems to, without proper communication, it might just p pit parents against kids, whereas if you take the time to explain things, be like, hey, this is what it is, and this is why it is, they're a lot calmer about it, they're like, oh, and they're going to ultimately view you as a lot more rational, and you're going to view them as, I mean, yeah, it's just... And I was about to say it's easier said than done, but it's really not. It's as simple as that. Just show respect. I still don't, like, let them watch, like, you know... Well... <laughs> I'm still protective of what they can see and what they can, you know... But at the same time, like, we play, like, Fortnite and... Started letting him play Dark Souls. Started with Dark Souls 2, because that's only teen rated. <clears throat> and then, I don't know, I was kind of playing Dark Souls 1, and I was like, eh, I don't understand why. I mean, it is rated a little higher than teen. So I let them start. They didn't uh, really get into it, and they already moved on to other things, so not a big deal. But, like, and besides that, they were playing Battlefield, uh, not Battlefield, Battlefront. And I had it, I was concerned about that. I was like, wait, should we be letting them play that? And it was actually my co-parent, and, like, she was like, what? It's fine. Like, I don't know if she understood what Battlefront was, and I think I even explained to her, I was like, hey, yo, this is, uh, this is, like, Call of Duty, but with Star Wars. She's like, so, or something, I don't know. And I think, and, and to her credit, no, not trying to make her sound any, one way or the other, but, like, I think she was just more concerned about, I think we were having a discussion about something else, and, like, she was just like, okay, yeah, whatever, like, didn't really realize, and then, you know, and save face and not look foolish, like, you know, kind of, like, revisit that. But I tend to do that a lot. I will do that, because it bothers me. Like, if I leave things, to a point, though. I mean, I used to be worse, where I'd, like, walk up to somebody and something that happened, like, a couple months ago, I'd be like, hey, you know what? This has been bothering me. I'm sorry about this. And they'd be like, okay, like, why? So. Oh. Okay, yeah, this is kind of scary, because it's so far down here. Like, look at this, we're already a third... Getting me close. Okay, I guess we're close to halfway over half. Hmm. I don't know. Like those look cool, but as I continue to fill in down, and eventually the idea is to have cover all of the this is like bowl of this giant dugout area in this stuff. Yeah, I like that, because that'll make these into, like, yellow spires, or yellow... Oh, I'm gonna just go down quickly, quickly deposit them, don't think about it, and then come right back up. It's just uncomfortable, the fact that I could die, drown, like, so close to my base. And, uh, it wouldn't be that bad, I'd lose all these levels, I'd much rather use those levels. Well, one, to be humorous, and move it back to 6-9 every now and then, so... Uh, I just thought that was funny, because that was... That was the time I thought I was starting a new series, but actually, if I hadn't said anything, I guess it would be more obvious to me because 
I ended up keeping this as all wizard living is supreme because <laughs> I noticed how um, how many videos were in it. I'm trying to balance that out. And I don't feel as bad. Like Fighting Cowboy has like 10,000 videos or something. And he does entire playthroughs. So I feel like YouTube, if I don't start making money with this stuff, they might start being like, hey, you need to get rid of some of the stuff. But I'm wondering what the limit is. And I should probably read the guidelines too and see like what they suggest. So I feel like if more people did that and didn't wait for it to get to a point where they have to say something, like more preventative, preventative problem solving. And that's like the whole thing about the preventative blue teaming that I'm all about. Like, in fact, let's go down memory lane now that we've hung the clothes and we don't have any pressing things. All right, so the ideas of preventative blue teaming is disarming a would-be malicious actor before they commit the malicious activity. And that could range from everything from fishing to try to get some money from somebody or, hey, can uh, mostly it's just money. I mean, it's people, anyone with a connection to the outside world will try to trick or scam Americans because in their eyes, Americans got it fine. They, and to a point we do, but... And even as I say that, like, not justifying malicious activity in any way. I'm still a white hat. Am I still, like, helping hunt? Not prosecute so much, but hunt. I mean, and they're going to do what they're going to do. Like, if you're breaking the law, then your own country is going to deal with you. But at the same time, I feel like we're getting close to a point where, I mean, well, we need to shut it down to start. But we also need to disarm the would-be attacker by removing the factors that would lead to somebody doing an attack like that. Now, with government stuff, that's even a more serious problem. That's life and death. That's, um... Are we going to invade or are we going to be invaded? And there's so much projected paranoia back and forth. And not even paranoia. When people slight each other and like, you know, and these things, whether intentional or unintentional too, there's that factor too. Like, it could be an accidental, oh, I didn't mean it like that. But now this country, they like us a little less for this. And then the intentional, where it's like, hey, we're shipping a bunch of weapons and we know you're going to kill some people, but to us, that's worth the... And a lot of that is the inertia. We made a lot of money during the World Wars by building weapons. We found that, and you know, I kind of recommend The Lord of War with Nicolas Cage. Wait. Yes. <laughs> I had to think. And I even made a website with um, some funny faces of Nicolas Cage, like one of him as a cat, like just weird memes and stuff I found on the internet. And I used that for one of my college projects. <laughs> like, I think there's one with, like, a like Nicolas Cage and a bunch of guns or something. And in a funny way, no. But, like, The Lord of War is a very serious and somber story of how arms dealers function. And the CIA being one of the biggest arms dealers. My own country. And, and again, whenever I say these things, I'm not saying, like, oh, you know, dismantle my country or it's so evil or something. I love my country. But I want to have everybody, and this is what I feel like, the founding fathers are really hoping for is have a form of government and then have that as a model of government for the rest of the countries in the world to kind of take ideas from and make their own and I feel like that's what's happening because I mean nobody likes to just be considered oh we're wrong we've been wrong for all these years like you know as far as like communism versus capitalism and there's definitely some drawbacks with capitalism we've got some un or unimaginable greed and wealth in the hands of the few but at the same time like, and this is what I'm kind of helped my own blood pressure and helped me sleep at night. I want to start focusing on more about, okay, yeah, they're making a lot of money, but are they giving back? And are and if they aren't, is it because they just don't want to or because they don't know how? And so once we figure out these discrepancies, because at the end of the day, they're all people and they all think in similar ways as other people. And I've yet to meet a person that's just like, you know what? No. I mean, like, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to give back or anything like Every last person I've talked to says, oh, yeah, if I had some money, I'd like to do that. Or, oh, that'd be cool. Or, you know, I, I've never heard something like, oh, that's lame. Why would they do that? Like, I mean, I don't know. Uh -huh. huh. Yeah, let's get some emeralds. All right. So basically what I want to do on here, though, is continue to kind of describe the problems, the issues, lay out the facts, bring the stuff, and not in a boring, like, because I hate talking about Christianity, because I'm so embarrassed, like, um, okay, well, I was talking kind of as jokingly with one of my buddies, um, you know, it's kind of like the Antichrist is coming about in the sense, not the devil, but, like, I mean, I've heard, like, people saying that the Antichrist is going to come soon, or the second coming, or... I mean, even South Park lore, it's like the second coming is actually the Antichrist or the 
the devil or the devil child or whatever. In fact, that's a Critter Christmas. Oh, and I still got a book of time at Casa Bonita. Oh, man. Oh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker are going to be so disappointed in me. <laughs> I'm kidding. They have no idea who I am. But they're the creators of South Park, and they uh, they own Casa Bonita now, and I'm, I plan on going and visiting because that's a part of... I oh, love South Park. It taught me all sorts of life lessons and entertainment and stuff. Granted, I've already, like, bought a lot of their stuff, but, I mean, I'll, I'd like to go try their restaurant via Colorado. So... And I wouldn't doubt it if they're also, like, making Colorado better and stuff, donating to things. So, anyways, um, I was just seeing on a Facebook post that J.K. Rowling donated $160 million, was off, knocked off the Forbes billionaire list, is back on the billionaire list. Um, there's a lot of high, um, discrepancy about that, I believe because of her, stand, her views on transgender uh, people. And... I mean, yes, like, some people are mad that she spoke out against trans transgender people, and I don't know the extent of it, and I don't know the extent of what she meant by it, too. Like, it, part of communication is if you only have so much to go on, like, that can, the game of telephone is an excellent example of how bad it can get with communication. Like, by the end of it, and for those that don't know, it's a kid's game where you start off with a phrase, and some people say it, man, where is everybody going? Are they sleeping up here? Okay, yeah, they are making it up here. Actually, you know what? That's right. Let's just go to bed. Let's stop wake. Oh, it's an eclipse, too. All right. Oh, we missed the eclipse. That's okay. Don't ever look at them with your just your plain eyes. All right. Um, we've got to spend a little money to make a little money. And then from here, we don't need to worry about it, because then we can get these. But also, that was kind of wasteful. I should have gone back. We know we're going to be doing the pumpkins and the melons, getting more emeralds, like... We're back up there. So. Anyways, and now we have another person we can sell produce to. Or trade with. I don't know. All people at the bases think the same. Like, and I, that's why it's totally the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I say it tons of times on these things, and it's true. First, you start off with your basic needs. Oh, man, you expensive. Yeah, it's economics right there. Demand and supply. Although I do have a lot of supply, I can afford to pay a higher price. However, I don't want to reward behavior like that, so I'm not going to. And that's actually going to... Oh, uh, no. Just kidding. I think it's because they didn't go to bed, maybe? And I need to find the ones that did actually go to sleep. Or build some more houses down there. Just kidding. I'm greedy. I'm going to go down here and do that. But that's the part of capitalism that it's bad if it's not capped, if it's not checked. And basically, like, what I mean by that is, like, there are a bunch of marketing tricks and ploys to basically trick people into spending more money. And even no matter how good you budget things, like, it's really easy, really easy to slip up and buy something or spend money you probably shouldn't have or do this or that or whatever. So, um, and on top of that, like, I'm still pretty sure that, like, um, the software that runs, well... Without divulging too much information, because there are still people out there that are going to try to steal from people, and hopefully not people watching these things and trying to steal from me, but, I mean, and, oof, be careful with that, because my own government is very interested in me, and not for any proud reasons. So, <laughs> it's not like they want to come pat me on the back, no, they, uh, they want to keep an eye on me, so. And again, not like I'm some cool or great all awesome or anything, it's really dumb, but, anyways. Most of it is my training as a cybersecurity professional. Some of it is my checkered past that even if exposed wouldn't be all that bad. But you got to think about rate of exposure and your audience too. If someone coming off the street and hearing one of these videos, oof, why not look all good for old a -Rai? <laughs> Or me whistling and singing off camera like while I'm hanging my laundry. Oh, because that's I failed to plan, so I plan to fail at least at that part. Um, I didn't budget my time properly. I knew I had enough time to do this before I go do some other errands, but I wanted to squeeze in some laundry there. Run it parallel to all the other things I'm doing. So. What are we even doing? What am I doing with my life? No, I'm just kidding. You know, quite a bit, actually, but apparently, thanks to Grok, there's a lot more of the 
the work has already been paved ahead. And another thing I say a lot on these things, and it's so true, is I can see what I see because I stood on the shoulders of giants. I mean, that's basically it. Like, and I forget who said that. Newton, Copernicus, some smart person that has my respect, doesn't have my full attention, but my respect. And I hope, you know, like, and it's true with everything. Nobody really intends disrespect unless they're having a bad day or there's some prior bad blood between the two. I mean, a lot of times, actually, no, that's not true. I mean, if they do something messed up right then and there, okay. Like, I could have a problem with somebody for that in the current. But, I mean, a lot of it is miscommunication, misunderstanding what's going on. And it could be, like, as much as a dirty look, like, or someone's, like, deep in thought. They, they call it the resting bee face. Like, uh, yeah, you know, uh, where you're just angry when you're, when you're just thinking, you're just in thought. Also, wait, should we go? Let's go ahead and keep building the thing and then talk about the thing. I mean, well, let's take some books. Let's take some signs. Well, we gotta get. We need some item frames. I don't even know where to begin to look for all that stuff. We got sticks, hides. Okay, those were the rocks. Those are empty still. These are hodgepodge. Nothing valuable. The writing supplies that it's in here. This sticks, and there we go. Okay, so probably need more sticks. I think it was already in there. More sticks. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll make our comparative religion section of the temple. Now the temple, which I don't have a name for. It's going to have an ofrenda for the Dia de los Muertos. It's going to have a respect for the dead. Now, an ofrenda is actually more of like an altar where you put like offerings and an ofrenda. Am I saying that right? Because I don't want to be butchering that. I'm not trying to mock Spanish speakers. I speak horrible Spanish, but I did try. Four years in high school, went to Costa Rica, spoke Spanish when I could in certain situations, but it's hard when you don't. That's why I like I'm kicking myself. I'm kicking myself for not doing the pen pal thing, but I was a raging alcoholic at the time. And yes, this was like right out of high school. So, small towns, it's easier to get away. I mean, actually, it's not easier to get away with that, but I mean, I don't know. I feel like so much of that. Sorry, I'm thinking like drunk driving and all the accidental deaths that could have been avoided. And a lot of times, like, you know, even kids experimenting with those things, like, it's not great. I'm not encouraging that. And like, and, But knowing what I know now doesn't change the fact that I probably would have done all the same things when I was a kid. Stupid things based on an under, unfully, or underdeveloped prefrontal cortex, your decision maker, or, or your ability, to, or which controls your ability to make decisions based on past experiences and, and you know and information so I imagine that's what a lot of like AI is but then you got other factors like how if you're not getting your basic needs met it can start warping your behavior your attitude like oh wait wait you can make more oh all right well we really didn't get to a whole lot of much hope you enjoyed the the break for the laundry. I don't know, I was saying some other stuff over there, but I was just cracking up, just imagining, like, what would I do if I was watching this? And I do. I love my, I love watching these things. Not that I'm so full of myself, but, like, I don't know, man, is a little full of myself, Jesus. I think we all kind of, I'm rambling. We all like to hear our own voice and see what we're doing. When it's good, when it's bad, ugh, it's all bad, so. Anyways, that's my rambling for now. I envisioned putting like the religions as kind of like having like a couple walkways off to this and having like you know Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, and, like all like the main ones, but then also having like little altars like stemming off even further of like all of the other little ones. I mean, there's tons, and uh, and us especially touching on pagan and the transition of pagan through to Greek and Roman mythologies. No, those were the more pagan. Sorry, Greek and Roman because they had polytheistic. I don't know, see, and even that, understanding the difference between pagan, like, it's been a while since I've even looked any of this up, but I've studied a lot of artwork that, you know, um, 
tells stories of all the different beliefs and stuff. And Z Zeitgeist has a great section that just talks about all the different re religions where the Savior dies for three days and is resurrected. Like, even just that little tidbit, that's got to send alarms going off to any Christian out there. Like, oh, wait, 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 Jesus did that. And I'm one of those people, too. I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I, I heard that all growing up. But anyways, do I believe it? Maybe a coma? Maybe it didn't even happen? I don't think he was. Anyways, we'll get into that in the next one. So, ta-ta for now. I will see you there.